Here, let me help you. Oh, let's see what you got here. Oh, isn't that nice? It looks like somebody. You're an artist. No, am I? Now, let's see. Here, let me help you with this. I'll take this, you take that. Okay? No, I'll take this and you take. This. No, as a matter of fact, well. No, I'll tell you what, let me have the easel back. You take the person. Here, you can take this right back and I'll take a hold of the uh <laughs> Somebody wanted to make it permanent. Who? Whom? All right, whom would want to make it permanent? Could be any one of four outraged fathers, three disappointed dollars, two consul generals, or a partridge in a pear tree. The French knew how to handle you aristocrats. <laughs> Some of us survived. Nobody's got a right holding me, including these police. They're not holding you. They're merely requesting you not to leave the country. Uh, well, I've got a right to leave this country anytime I want, right? Legally right. Right. 
Uh, however, I have given my personal assurance that you won't. What? Only until they complete the investigation. Well, shouldn't take more than six months. Oh, very funny. Very, very funny. <laughs> you can't come up with gems every time, Daniel. Look, there must have been 20 or 30 other passengers on that tarmac. Why didn't the uh, police hold them? Well, apparently they were at a good distance from you and the girl. Oh, naturally. So that automatically makes me the target, I suppose. Well, you seem more likely than a 22-year-old art student. Well, she could have had a jealous lover. With uh, a telescopic sight and flippers. He's right, you know. It was all planned too professionally. Do you think it was meant for me? I don't know. You've both been somewhat active along this coast from time to time. Well, excuse me, Judge, but whose fault is that? Uh, something may interest you. What's that? If you'll forgive the translation. It says oh. uh, people are wondering whether the shot that hit Mademoiselle Devine was in fact intended for the playboy du jet set, uh, Danny Wilde, pictured above at the Monte Carlo rally. Oh, yeah, nice picture. You know, uh, Michelle Devine is really rather attractive. Hmm. Why do you always look so furtive? Does it say where she went or uh, anything like that? Oh, isn't it marvellous? Hey, rather attractive and he wants to storm the operating theater. Well, I just want to know if they say where she went. Yes, uh, Hôpital de la Madeleine. Hôpital, that's Hospital de Madeleine, you dumb dumb. Aren't you being a trifle impetuous? Look, they're asking me questions. I want to ask her a question. See you later. Hi. Oh, nurse, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, pardon. Uh, le doctor parlez avec vous in the hallway. I think uh, a patient, the patient, is croaking in the next room or something. Yes. <laughs> I thought you'd never leave. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. Yeah. I got you some flowers. Thank you. I've been reading about you. How's your shoulder? A bit sore. Well, it, uh, you know, it could have been worse. Could have been a lot more uh, serious. Danny Wilde. I find that hard to believe. Well, why is that hard to believe? I've heard about your exploits. Is that the right word? Well, I don't know if they're exploits. Was someone really trying to kill you? Well, everybody seems to think so, yeah. And do you? What do you think? Well, I'll tell you, kiddo. It's either me or you. Me? You must be joking. I'm nobody. Who'd want to shoot me? So, for his own safety, we must uh, send him away. My great-uncle Charles runs a safari club in the wilds of Tanzania. It's uh, really quite comfortable. You uh, believe that bullet was meant for him? Well, he was a good 18 feet clear of anyone else. No professional sniper makes a six-yard mistake. If you discount the girl. You don't. Mademoiselle Devine, who lives with her uncle, one of Monte Carlo's more exclusive jewelers... Yes, I remember. ...had been voted the most talented student at the Valuri Arts Centre before her sudden decision to continue her studies in London. Uh, Millard, pray, what is the implication? Sudden. Before her sudden. Why sudden? Well, why not? People leave suddenly. Daniel, for instance. Mm. Danny doesn't deal in gold. Are you suggesting that girl is involved in illegal gold trafficking? I have no evidence to suggest anything, but her uncle is Maurice Devine, the custom jeweler who specializes in plaques, medals, and gold coins. He was involved in a most interesting case, a clever twisting of the law. Ah, here, you're taller than I am, A.G., please. I suppose you're going to tell me what you're talking about. Devine sold a gold Napoleon hundred franc piece, which turned out to be counterfeit. I suppose these are your special declared innocent but really guilty and got away with it, Pius. Exactly. In Devine's case, he testified. Now, wait a minute. Just let's see what he did testify. There. Oh, yes, here we are. He testified that as he himself was not too sure about the coin, he charged only the market value of the gold itself. Well, that's not illegal. No. But selling unauthorized gold is. Well, of course, but not in the form of coins. Counterfeit or otherwise? Well, that's the twist. Well, what's in the file about the girl? The girl? Oh, nothing. I know nothing at all about the girl. There really isn't much to know. 
I sketch, do clay modelling, a little engraving, chill of all trades, mistress of none. I lead a very uneventful life, Mr. Wilde. Oh, I don't know. I think being an artist would be an exciting life. Think of all the beautiful things in the world to see. And, uh, you're very good. And you're putting me on. No, I'm not. That was a, uh, very good ink portrait. What ink portrait? Uh, the one I, uh, saw at the airport. Water? Thank you. I'd really much rather talk about you. You're far more interesting. Are the things I hear about you true? <laughs> Don't believe everything you hear or read. Now, uh, who was, who was the guy? Who was who? Now, look. The guy, the one in the sketchbook, the one with the goatee beard. Ever seen a girl, Napoleon? No, but I knew someday you would show me one. Beautiful, isn't it? It's counterfeit. Really? <laughs> Valueless to a collector, but uh, literally worth his weight in gold. Which is why hundreds of them periodically turn up in Paris, Rome, Geneva and Beirut. Yes, well, it uh, sounds like a wonderful way of unloading stolen bullion. Precisely. Devine has neither the courage nor the capacity to be involved in that, but he might be used. As a funnel. As a funnel for something so big that they'd even kill to keep it going. Well, it's worthwhile exploring. In which case, the key would be... Monsieur Devine. Uncle! Oh, Michel. I, I just heard. I came as soon as... Careful. What happened? Is it serious? I... No, nothing. I'm all right. Hi. This is Mr. Wilde. My uncle, Mr. Devine. Enchanté. I was just keeping a company until you arrived. Goodbye. Why? Why did you run away? Why? I trusted in you. I believed you. You went to the foundry? Of course I did. If you had come to me, I would have explained. Explained what? That those molds I was making for you of the Napoleon coin weren't for bronze replicas? Michel, look. Look at my hands. I can no longer do this work myself. I had to ask you to make those molds. You still have the shop? No. It is not mine anymore. Not even that. Why not? What have you done with it? I had no choice. A syndicate came, offered to take over. Syndicate? Uncle, what on earth are you involved in? I cannot tell you. Please, please don't ask me any more questions. But if you do not want to you see me rot for the rest of my life in jail. You lied to me. You said you'd learned your lesson the first time you were arrested. I saw the kind of lesson you learned. Gold. You were minting gold coins, not bronze. Don't lie to me again, Uncle. I saw it. And someone saw you. Don't you understand? They saw you run from the foundry. Saw you buy an air ticket. Who? They panicked. Thought you would cause trouble. They had to stop you. So it was me. The bullet was meant for me. They tried to kill her, Polichin. They tried to kill my niece. What a terrible thing. I was aware, you know that. They will be adequately punished, believe me. If anyone so much as touches her again, Policino. Dear Divina, I know exactly how you feel. I'm, 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 I'm horrified. Did you really think that she would talk? About what? All she knows is that I am involved. She does not know that you even exist. We will try and keep it that way, eh, Divini? You came to promise me she will make no more foolish moves, am I not right? Of course. Excellent, excellent. You'll keep your side of the bargain, Policino keeps his. The girl keeps her mouth shut and stays in one place. Now you go back to your shop in comfort, eh, knowing all will be well, eh? Bye, bye. <laughs> so, you arranged to have the girl killed, then? Eh? What, uh, what kind of primitive animal are you, eh? Somebody had to make a decision. So you did. Eh? A blind panic decision that's made her the center of interest for every policeman and pressman on the Riviera. Eh? That's not true, not anymore. We are moving two and a half billion dollars worth of gold through that old man. I give you a solemn warning, Vernier. If what you did jeopardizes our operation, your family can start lighting candles for you. I did a jump! I just did a jump! 
Ah, oh, isn't that something, eh? How high did you jump, my little cowgirl, eh? Oh, high. And I'm going to do it again. Watch me. I'm watching, I'm watching, Cat. The police aren't interested in the girl anymore. <laughs> they think the shot was meant for someone else. Hey, Mr. Danny Wilde, I also read the papers right there. They must do more than think it was him. They have to be sure. Give them more evidence, huh? What do you suggest? Remove any doubt. So suddenly I stop and I ask myself, uh, what do I care if this girl is acting strange? Who am I, Sherlock Holmes? I'm Danny Wilde with my own problems in London. So after lunch, which I'm going to let you buy me, uh, uh, it's going to be up, up and away, even if I have to charter a plane on my own. Have you finished? Yeah, completely. Well, if the judge's theory is correct, then the bullet could have been meant for the girl after all. I've got news for you, my lord. I don't care if that bullet was marked his or hers. Oh, I admire your gallantry. Furthermore, Judge Fulton can take his assurances and... An Americano. Uh, what? Monsieur? Americano. What do you want to drink? Oh, yeah. A uh, lemonade. A lemonade? Yes. <laughs> that girl really did something to you. That girl didn't do anything to me. Oh, maybe you weren't her type. How does a mind like yours get so decadent, huh? It's hereditary. <laughs> you know, if she lives with her uncle and her uncle is part of this Napoleon racket, then they're also mixed up with some less than lovable characters. People with nasty little habits like picking off other people at airports. Bully for them. Merci. Cheers. If you can say cheers with a thing like that. Do you want to test this and see if it's poisoned? So it's the girl they're after, huh? I promise you, you'll be very happy in Tanzania, Daniel. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a little primitive, I'll admit, but uh, my uncle, the Viscount Chesterfield, uh, is an excellent host. Who knows, he may even help you catch a wildy beast. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, I get it. Nobody's going to aim his dirty car at me and get away with it. Uh, you want me out of this country, you're going to have to deport me. There is a plane leaving for London in half an hour. Have a nice trip. Yeah, well, I suggest you have something to eat, you know. Oh, there's open place sandwiches up, sir. Hey, wait a minute. You know what I think I'm going to try to do? I'm going to trace that car. Oh, that should be easy. They can't be more than 2,000 in the of France. Uh, this one's got a busted fender. Well, that does limit the field to uh, 1,000. Tanzania. You keep saying Tanzania. I'm not going to Tanzania. I'm going to stay here and find that car. Oh, I wish you'd make up your mind. One minute you want to go, the next minute you want to stay and chase untraceable cars. It's probably trying to ambush you in the first place. What are you so worried about me for, huh? Well, perhaps I'd uh, rather hate you alive than dead. <laughs> well, I wish you'd make up your mind. At the airport, you tell me that it's me they're after. When we get to the cafe, you tell me it's the girl they're after. Now they're after me again. Make up your mind, Well, they're pal. probably gunning for both of you. Would you send somebody out for Mr. Wilde's back? What do you please? mean, both of us? I just said hello to the girl. We're not Bonnie and Clyde, you know. I don't understand you. I don't understand you. The British and Americans, two people separated by a common language. See what I mean? I That's don't understand you. another while. I don't know. You want to do me a favor? Mm. Don't do me any more favors. Well, in that case, who's going to pay for lunch? I didn't have any lunch. You had lunch. Yeah, but you ordered it. What are you... I tell you what. You we're certainly chill. argument. We'll uh, toss for it. All right, toss. Call. Heads. Oh, heads, aren't you lucky? Hey, you wait a win. minute. What? That's the guy. That's the guy. That's Napoleon III. Yeah, but that's the guy in the sketch, Michelle's sketchbook. You know the sketch she made? That's the guy she made the sketch of. Most interesting speculation. She's just a uh, young, aspiring artist working for her uncle, sketching coins, that's all. One casts coins. These casts are then reduced on an engraving machine and made into a steel die, which in turn punches out the coins. Did you just make that up? Pearls before swine, may I? Of course, and good luck. Tutelur. Now where are you going? Prospecting. Bonjour, Monsieur. Guten Tag. We are interested in your coins. Ah, coins and. Uh, what sort of coins have you in mind, monsieur? Well, the best. We are interested only in the best. My late father, General von Garman, 
would always say, less than the best is not best enough. Well, <laughs> does not translate well. <laughs> the coins, bit. Uh, well, we, uh, we have a varied selection yeah. from these <coughs> superb gold ones, oh, sure, several sure, sure. enormous mint condition, to some extremely rare uh, silver specimens. And we ourselves mint a very fine bronze reproduction of the popular 100 franc gold, Napoleon III. Like this one, yeah? Ah, uh, yes. A particularly fine specimen. Yeah, but uh, we ask ourselves, is it genuine or is it counterfeit? Pardon, monsieur. Oh, we understand that there are many good copies around. Nicola? There are indeed. You are quite correct, monsieur. Oh, we von Graumanns always try to be correct. My father, the general, would say, any Dummkopf can be incorrect, but not to be a Dummkopf is more correct. <laughs> it's good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's even better in German. <laughs> now, Peter, you will uh, tell me the correctness of this coin. Well, it, uh, it will be a, a personal opinion only. Yes, exactly what we wish. Yes, the work is uh, good, but uh, it is a copy. It is not genuine. So, so. But the value? And it, uh, it is a counterfeit piece. You have all. But the metal is not counterfeit. It is genuine. Well, in that case... Yeah, in that case, huh? Well, it uh, weighs an ounce. The market value of the gold alone is uh, a little bit more than $35. We prefer to speak in Deutschmarks. Well, I will have to check on the currency conversion table. Or even better, in uh, Reichsmarks. Reichsmarks? Or to be more precise, Reich gold. I'm afraid I do not understand, monsieur. Uh, Herr uh, I am in your trade. Like you, I represent big interests. Uh, I see. Good. So we will, uh, we will continue the discussion in your office. It will afford more privacy. Gabor? Please. Present time. Wunderschön, wunderschön. Yes, we do have some very beautiful pieces. I, too, have something very beautiful, Herr Devine. It is a steel chest my father raised from the depths of the Vansi in Bavaria. It was part of the famous Reichbank gold convoy that Adolf Hitler tried to move to Switzerland. Yes, I suppose it has a certain curiosity value. Ah, but what is the value of the gold that is still inside that chest, I ask myself? Zwei und zwanzig solid gold in <laughs> Excuse me, monsieur. Bitte. on today's gold quotations, allowing 10% discount. I am sorry, monsieur. I cannot help you further in the matter. But I was instructed you were the person to contact. Well, I don't know who could have told you that, monsieur. Well, in our trade, we do not disclose names. Of Herr course David. not. But the simple fact is that we do not buy gold in bulk, whatever its source. Herr Garman. Von Garman. I will contact you again in, say, 24 hours. I'm sorry. It will just be a waste of time. Ah, my uh, father, the general, always said it is never a waste of time if some of the time has not been wasted. <laughs> Pity man, my father, huh? Oh, Peter's there. You're this girl, right? You see or hear something that you shouldn't, so you want out. A large warehouse, a factory, some place that's been out of business until recently. Yes, yes, of course I'll wait. So that's what you do. But somebody doesn't want you out, so they try to stop you. A near miss. Yes. Splendid. And uh, who is the actual owner of the company? Now here you are lying in a hospital, afraid for your life, and you clam up. Why? Oh, he does, does he? 
Well, tell me, where is this place? Um, could you let me have the address? Why doesn't she just go to the police and uh, spill everything she knows? I don't know. I'll tell you why. She's got an uncle that she loves very much that's in it up to his gold Napoleons, that's why. Yes, yes, I'm ready. Now, here's the switch. All of a sudden, she gets too hot to handle, so they got to take the heat off. I'm most grateful. So they take it off and they put the heat on me. Meanwhile, the fuzz is busy with me. They're up in the mountains making these little gold nappies, huh? <sighs> it's probably in a uh, stone quarry or a warehouse. How about an abandoned foundry that suddenly sprung to life? Uh, um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's up in the old province.
Everybody nice. Yes? Dakar. That was the main gate. The Vigna just drove through. What are you doing here? Something came up. It could be something big. There was a man in the shop, Herr von Grammer. He says he has got his hands on the Van Say gold. All the ingots the Nazis hid. What? It could be a fortune, Pulcino. It just came to me with a proposition. If it is true. What were you doing? Huh? Huh? Who? Sinclair. I don't know any Sinclair. Oh, don't lie to me. I saw him drive away from your shop. The only one who came in was Von Caron with this proposition. I can imagine the proposition, huh? He's Danny Wilde's friend. I followed him. I know. Let him go. your mind, old man. Nothing. Nothing I am telling you. A man came, he has a German accent, he offers his deal. You have betrayed us, old man. No. No. Dead. So was our control over that girl. We better get to the hospital and silence her for good. Watch his car. Visiting hours are over. Yes, I know, but this is very urgent. No one has been up to here. The visiting hours yes, are yes, finished. Yes, yes, And now, if I may see Michelle. Certainly. Yes, I don't think we should upset her by mentioning the No, no, of course not. Shh, come on. No, tell me. Shh. I'll explain. 
explain everything later. Immediately, I apologize for the troubles. Can I ask you something? What are you uh, apologizing about, huh? What is it? Oh, why? Uh, where's Michelle? She'll be down in a minute, she said. Yes. Any luck? All bad. Oh, wish I hadn't asked. Well, the police have been to the foundry, but the birds had flown. No body, no truck, no packing cases, no coins. So the police commandant is sending an escort here to make sure the American troublemaker is on the next plane. Bon voyage. Well, I told you what I saw. Oh, I believe you. I know this Pulicino. He's been implicated in every major theft in Europe. I've wanted to see him behind bars for years, but he cannot be convicted without positive proof. What about the uh, shipping manifesto, the one you lifted from the foundry? Six crates, bronze coins, destination Genoa. It's perfectly legitimate. Oh, come in, my dear. Go and sit down. Have a cup of coffee. Thank you. Oh, wasn't there anything else? Anything? Some tangible evidence? Hey, wait a minute. What about, um, what about this coin? I clipped it from one of the packs. Hmm. Well, it's exactly what their manifest states. A replica of the Napoleon. In bronze. There were others in gold. I was there. I saw them minting gold coins. From the Napoleon molds you made for your uncle? I didn't know. I didn't know about Pulicino. The only reason I went to the airport was to get away. So it was you they were trying to kill? Yes. It was my uncle they destroyed. If it hadn't been for them, he would have... Yes, I know, my dear, but there's no proof that they were doing anything illegal. Daniel, hmm. when you got there, were the crates already packed? Uh, well, almost packed, yes. Well, perhaps they sandwiched the gold between layers of bronze. Perhaps is not a legal term. If you stop them and find nothing wrong, you're in trouble. We're always in trouble. I think we ought to check that out, Joe. You go off half what are you Daniel. Oh, we got a half hour start. Today. So? Well, after Monte Carlo, there are two roads they can take into Italy either the, the Lower Coast Road or the New Art Australia. Okay, fine. We got two cars, right? You take the lower and I'll take the outer. Oh, there's a song there. Somewhere. I'm going with you. <laughs> You're not going in. The Chantabri, your escort. Now go out the back door. Yes, girl. Wait a minute. I'm not taking any wounded girl in my red Ferrari. Now. If you don't take me with you, I'll scream. It's not a bad idea, anyway. Because if you are stopped, at least she can corroborate your story. I'm coming. Hello? Mayfair? Hello, come in, please. Hello? Yes, Bronx, I read you. It's not Daniel, it's Michelle. Uh, have you seen any trucks? Not yet. Where are you? Ez. Outside of Ez. We're just outside Ez. Ez? You're three miles behind me. You remember that little white number that spilled your lemonade? Yeah, sure. What about it? Ask him now. He says, sure. What about it? It's been tailing me for the last three miles. That's Sinclair's car, up ahead. Well, we can be sure Mr. Wilde is covering the other route. Don't lose him.
Hello, Bronx, are you reading me? Yeah, we're yeah. reading. I'm here. I'm stuck between the board of gendarmerie and the lemonade spillers. How about you? We're in sunny Italy. Uh, the uh, van just passed through customs, about six cars ahead of me. You better go on my road and keep tabs. Get in his car. Keep his mouth shut. Je m'excuse, monsieur, mais vous devez utiliser l'autre voie. I don't suppose you believe me. I told you the van that just passed through was carrying two million dollars worth of gold. And I'm sorry, sir, but you must use the other lane. All right, well, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> My grandmother's a hundred years old today. Ma vieille grand-mère est la cent ans aujourd'hui. Eh? <laughs> and she's flying to Rome to have a little of the Dolce Vita before she finally passes on. Well, if I'm not there to help her off the plane, she may fall, break a leg and miss the whole thing. <laughs> oh, je comprends. One and three. Yes, yes. Okay, cent ans. C'est magnifique. Eh, fantastique, eh? <laughs> à tout à l'heure. Now look, I was just telling this young lady that a fool! Wait, put me down. Thanks. Put him! That's better. All you have to do is be reasonable, Daniel. Oh. Oh. You should have asked me. Oh! Hey, um, uh, Peter Pan, come here, I want to talk to you. I just thought of something. You see, Daniel? When I punch them, they stay down. Yeah, yeah, right, come on. I just had a horrible thought. Really? Oh. Yes, that uh, we better be right about this smuggling or uh, we're going to be in trouble. Look, I'm telling you, I know those coins are gold. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you something? What do you know about uh, Italian jails? <laughs> Nothing. But I prefer French cooking anyway.
What's going Daniel, on? Daniel, there's something you ought to know. Arrest him! Arrest him? What? what are you I'm talking about? To tell Let go! Now look, I've been shot at. People have aimed cars at me. They've been trying to hit me in that truck. Now look, I want to... Arrest him! Arrest him! They're hijackers. They stole this camion. Who owns this machine? Uh, who are you? Chief of police. He owns this machine. That guy right there. And those two guys behind him, they've been shooting at us all along the auto strata. Yes, sir. Of course we did. They were stealing my camera. I have a right to protect my cargo. He's a gold smuggler. Daniel. What? Daniel. Daniel, please take notice of me. How dare you? I will sue you for defamation of character. Go ahead. What about this uh, gold smuggling? Oh, God. Bronze copies of the Napoleon coin. Gold. <laughs> gold. Bronze. I'm telling you, they're gold. Bronze. Bronze. Did you come up? They are thieves of the worst kind. I demand you put them under arrest. Please do not tell me what to do, monsieur. Now look, feel the difference. This is gold, and this is bronze. They've been dead. What did I tell you? Daniel, I apologize. What else can I say except I'm not used to handling coins? They make holes in one's pockets. <laughs> I've a legitimate shipment of bronze coins. Right, tell them both of you. Gold. 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 <laughs> Here you are, sir. Here you are. Examine that, please. Arrest these men. <gasps> Oh, do you know my friend? This is Pulicino. Oh, you're... Forgive me if I don't shake hands. <laughs> oh, you sure hit hard. Uh, not really, just about ten Napoleons worth. Oh. <laughs> Lord Brett Sinclair. Hello, I am. Yes. Oh, if you believe that, you'll believe anything. It's a telephone message from Judge Fulton. We'll telephone him back and tell him we don't need any. Apparently it is you who needs you. Oh, why, wow, monsieur? What is it? The good judge has been arrested. What for? For interfering with the police in the course of their duties. Uh, well, that'll teach him. Huh? Well, what do you think we ought to do? Right. Suppose we could bail him out. <laughs> yeah, we could. Tell you what, why don't you think about it? Uh, Michelle and I are going to have dinner. Yes. I have the money. Come on, I'll tell you what. Daniel. We'll do. What? The dinner money. Oh, here comes a car. Come on. That smiles. Bonjour. Uh, how about a little ride, pal? What do you say? Huh? Uh, 